The next three times the Irish had the ball, they scored. A 71-yard drive. Tom Gatewood, touchdown. The ball might have been caught. Anyway, it is. Touchdown, Notre Dame, and the receiver was tackled. Corey Robinson. What were the other receivers trying to get out of the yard? Cotton Bowl, 1960, the first one, the long bomb, the first touchdown scored that day. And to get the big one, the big one against Texas, uh, was tough with that team being undefeated, trying to knock them off as uh, the number one team in the country. And the first time in 45 years, Notre Dame goes back to a bowl game. So for us to just set it on fire immediately, was great. You know, I went to a, a Christian high school, so we, we walked the field, kind of like how, you know, the, the Israelites walked around Jericho, you know, saying, this is your field. Like, God, whatever happens to you, we're going to, you know, we're going to give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. And, you know, as I'm walking away, I always pray that prayer that I did back in high school, saying, like, whatever happens, like, this is all. I'm going to put all the effort out, like, the result is yours, and, you know, hopefully I can glorify you the best of my abilities. But then when I get back in the locker room, yeah, I just kind of put in my island music. I like to be really, really calm. I had the same kind of uh, calming kind of a thing because I'm not a rah rah. I don't I don't slam on shoulder pads, yeah. and I'm not, I don't want anybody slamming my helmet. You know yeah. that's not because uh, I fancy myself as a smart receiver. Uh, I took whatever knowledge I got in the classroom, and my brain was always at work and on that football field. I knew where all the problems were. I could run a defender right into a soft spot, and you can see this area here where all that. That sand that's covering muddy areas. I got them in that whole zone. Yeah. See, you see him slip? Wow, yeah. He slipped right in that spot. I gave him one little step and he went right in that hole and I was gone. So it didn't have to do totally with speed, it had to do with being smart. And it electrified oh the crowd. Goodness. It electrified the crowd. Oh, these are my highlights? <laughs> oh my God. Let's watch you. Let's watch you. <laughs> You're stretching the defense there. Yeah. Um, last year I ran a lot of. A lot of those fade routes to the to the boundary where you know they line me up inside in the slot, mm -hmm. and they give me a ton of field to work with. I'm not as good as uh, running after the catch as you are. A lot of my catches, you see me just falling down and catching. Cause I'm always jumping and then. Right, you're in an awkward mm -hmm. position while you're up, so you got to regroup once you hit the ground. I sort of modeled myself a little bit after there was a, a receiver who's in the National Football League Hall of Fame named John Mackey, and he told me, you know, taught me this sort of glide stride so that when you receive the ball, the minute you put the first foot down, mm -hmm. you're in a balancing act so you can push off that foot mm -hmm. and be prepared to strike. And so it was a lot of shoulder, you know, forearm blow and roll and, and absorb, absorb the hit and sort of just, you know, let the defender go. Rather than trying to muscle them, he just sort of like delivered the first blow yeah. but rolled and they just they fall off. Really? They, they really fall off. So you might want to. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Because most of the time try I, try to, I try to muscle, you know, and I'm not that strong. <laughs> so it's just kind of like, always get down. Oh, yeah. That makes a lot yeah. more sense. Watch me lower the shoulder. See the shoulder? Now yeah. it's spin. You know, doing against and Southern roll. Cal. You know, it's like, but you see how many. And I'm gliding here. I mean, I'm just. You probably don't run routes as soft as that mm -hmm. because I'm rounding corners sometimes. I was always given the impression when I was recruited and I signed up with Notre Dame was that the, the total man is the man who wears the jersey and the man who wears the polo going to class, that it was the same guy. It was also the understanding that football was not extracurricular, it was a part of the curriculum. When Eric Parsi again uh, offered me a scholarship, he said, we're looking for you to make, and we think that you can make a tremendous contribution to the university and to your future. So I interpreted my future as I've got a small window of football, and I've got a much larger lifespan after football is over. So my future is going to be built on my education. Some of that education took place on the football field, and some of it takes place in the classroom. So keep the balance. You're obviously a very intelligent man. I know you're cerebral. I can tell just in how you are analyzing film and, and what's going on, and you sound spiritual as well. Be satisfied in both places because you're good at what you do in both places. You can't settle for anything less than excellent, and you shouldn't. So as long as you can be there, I think you'll be happy. Thank you so much. Thank I really you. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thank you.